I grew up in the foothills of a large mountain range and I started hiking at a fairly young age. One afternoon in my early teens, I decided to go out alone as my usual hiking friend was busy with a family commitment. I called and left a message for her as to where I would be anyway just in case she got home early and wanted me to meet out there. This was in the days of answering machines. As this was essentially our backyard, I always felt safe and comfortable. Approximately two miles in was a draw which was a pretty popular place for us to hike out to due to a little waterfall and a pretty stream. I was there about 10 minutes when I looked up at the East Ridge. Through a clearing in trees, I saw what I thought was my friend walking through the brush, so I called out to her, however, it was most definitely not my friend. The person, I'm pretty sure it was a woman, but I really couldn't tell for sure, backed up to the clearing in the trees and turned to face me. The look on their faces terrified me. It was simultaneously malicious and gleeful. Something in my heart my brain my being told me to run. I made it back to our house in record time, where my brother eventually found me lying in the grass. Pretty sure I passed out for a few seconds from not breathing during my sprint home. Two years ago, my husband and I went to Boys for a comedy show. We lived in Utah. Upon arriving, the only directions sent to us were the code to the front door and that he wouldn't be home. We pulled up and the house is massive. We walk in and are kind of confused as to where to go. The picture of the advertisement was a room in the basement with a bathroom next to it. So we went and settled in. The comedy show was that same night so I hopped in the shower. As I was getting out, my husband told me the host had messaged him and told him we were in the wrong room and to go into the room upstairs. Okay, but how did he know we were in the wrong room if he wasn't home? So we took our stuff upstairs and began looking around trying to figure out which room. We opened a few doors and there were several bedrooms, but the only bedroom that had new towels and water bottles on the nightstand was the master bedroom. Still a bit confused, we put our stuff down and noticed all of the owner's stuff was still in the nightstand drawers and a closet was full of clothes and jewelry. Directly next to the bedroom was an office and a bunch of dog toys and bowls of food and water, but no dog. We were a bit confused, but the owner told us he wouldn't be home all weekend and to make ourselves comfortable. The night came and went, and we went to our show. Explored some of boys and headed back to the house. We both kept telling each other something felt off but didn't know why. We agreed to wake up and take our time getting back on the road and to our kids. Fast forward to the next morning and we woke up to a dog running down the hallway and barks echoing throughout the massive house. My husband hopped out of bed and opened the door to see if someone was there but saw nobody. We packed up super early and left way faster than we originally planned. It was super weird. Like we were being watched and someone was with us the whole time. Airbnb in the 18th arrondissement of Paris. The place was a four-story apartment that I rented just for a weekend with a few friends. I stayed on the top floor, which was a converted attic with two beds and some basic accommodations. It never felt right being up there, it was dark, had no windows, and was just a bit claustrophobic, but I didn't think I'd mind because we weren't going to be spending a lot of time there. I couldn't get comfortable and couldn't fall asleep in that attic, it just didn't feel right. I was tossing and turning all night, spending lots of time staring at the ceiling. Around 4 a.m., I heard footsteps walking up the final staircase and the only exit, which led directly to the door of my attic room. The door whispered open, making a disturbingly quiet noise and high-pitched squeal. I don't think I would have heard it if I hadn't already been awake. It was dark, really dark, and I could barely make out the door slowly peeling open, as if someone was trying to sneak in. I stayed laying on my side and kept my eyes locked on the doorway as it continued to open, until I called out thinking it was my friend trying to mess with me. No response, but the door stopped inching open for a second. I called out again and again and got no response, but then the door swung wide open, slamming against the wall, and I saw a shadow outline of a person, distorted by darkness and only illuminated from the window behind it, which looked out onto the streets of Paris. The figure started approaching me slowly. It was so dark in there that I couldn't make out exactly what Slash was coming silently towards me, but I didn't wait to find out. Went full fight or flight mode and sprang up and out of bed, grabbing a nearby heavy lamp to use as a blunt weapon. My eyes must have been better adjusted to the dark than my evening guests, and I was able to keep my distance. I occasionally swung the lamp while moving in a skewed clockwise circle around the figure in the narrow claustrophobic attic as it approached me. After what felt like a few minutes but was probably a few seconds, I found myself with a clear path to the doorway and the subsequent staircase, so I threw the lamp at the intruder, breaking it with a shatter and I flew down all three flights of stairs with so much energy I was lucky not to fall and hurt myself. I shook awake my one friend and said that crazy shit was going down upstairs. I looked back and the door to the apartment was wide open. 
I told him that I was fucking leaving right now and calling the cops and that he should join me. He did join me without a second thought. Both of us were in pajamas and neither of us even grabbed our phones we were trying to get out of there so quickly. A few minutes later, my other friends arrived and told us that the place was all clear, but we were jerks for leaving the door open and trashing the place. We did leave the door open, but we did not trash the place. I did totally break a lamp though. Stayed at a lovely Air B and B for my little brother's graduation. He didn't know I was going to make it, so we threw a surprise party at the Air B and B. While we were setting up, my other brother and I went down to the basement to get an extra table. The second we got down there, we looked at each other and said, "Yup, it's scary here." The longer I spent in the basement, the greater the feeling of dread grew in me. We found the extra table and headed back upstairs, joking about how creepy a seemingly normal basement was. While we were celebrating, my girlfriend decided she'd run the washer. Which was downstairs, she asked me to go with her since it was creepy. Again, I went down and rushed to leave. The basement was now officially scary to me. Afterwards, my girlfriend and I were relaxing when the laundry buzzer went off. I looked at her, and she said she didn't pick up the load from earlier. I thought it was strange that it hadn't beeped hours ago. We headed down to the basement. Again, she stopped the stairs to the basement and asked me to go first. As I was going down, the buzzer on the washer went off again, scaring us. We both jumped. I hurried down and grabbed the laundry, and we headed upstairs to let it air dry. I should mention this was an oldish house, so the stairs were steep, and the bedroom where we slept was probably originally an attic. In order to turn on the lights upstairs, you had to flip a switch at the bottom of the stairs. When I flipped on the switch and headed for the stairs, I heard a loud banging sound, like the sound of pots or something metallic clanging. I began to go for the kitchen where there was a knife, but then I heard the metallic whacking again at the top of the stairs. I turned to look against the now illuminated attic and saw a ceiling fan turned on to its max setting, and its mounting pole was making the sound. I ran upstairs and turned off the fan. We got ready for bed. I had dreams of seeing a shadowy figure out on the lawn. I woke up the next morning tired and made my way down to the kitchen to brew some coffee. As I was turning around, I looked at the staircase to the basement. Something was wrong, and I don't know why, but I was drawn to the basement again. I looked down the stairs and walked down. I looked around and saw nothing. We had breakfast, packed our bags, and got ready to go. As we were doing one last sweep, I checked the kitchen one more time to make sure everything was in good shape. Just as I was about to say, "All good, let's go," that damn laundry machine buzzed. Both me and my girlfriend were just like, "Nope," and proceeded to get the fuck out. As we were leaving in a rush, I grabbed the bags and told my girlfriend to start the car. As I was leaving, the fan upstairs turned on again and began making a whacking noise. I've never bolted so fast out of a house. I texted the Airb and be host that the washer kept on making noises and that I couldn't figure out how to turn off the ceiling fan upstairs. They messaged back, "Thank you for staying with us."